Today, I'm talking about fiber in food and how it can dramatically impact your health in many more ways than just keeping you regular. Hello, my name is Dr. Iggy Suse and I'm a functional or integrative medical doctor and I've been in practice for over 35 years treating patients and especially those with gut-related illness. Welcome to my channel, Gut Health for Life, where I will be discussing all issues related to gut health and the microbiome. In this video, I'm going to talk about fiber and its many different and some surprising effects on your body. I'll explain how vital an ingredient it is for good and sustained health. We know that fiber is good for our health. The problem is that there are many different types of fiber with many different actions. Most people know that fiber is good for keeping, you, keeping us regular with our bowels. But research shows that the correct fiber has vastly more beneficial actions than just keeping it regular. But first, what is fiber? Dietary fiber consists of non-digestible forms of carbohydrate that originate from plant foods. These include cereals and grains, fruit, vegetables, nuts and legumes. Over recent decades, our diet in westernized societies has changed radically to include ultra-processed foods that are typically dramatically reduced in fiber and with vastly reduced fiber containing plant foods. Some studies have shown that if you compare our diet to the diets of people living in non-industrialized rural communities in Africa, they are seven times more they are they are eating seven times more fiber in their diet than we are in western societies seven times we have replaced all that extra fiber with highly processed carbs and high fat and high protein foods and we are paying a high price with our health and we are paying that price twice over one we miss we miss the protective effect of the fiber and two the price we pay for eating the ultra processed carbohydrates because eating a highly processed carbo diet of refined carbs like white bread and biscuits and donuts and cake are responsible for causing many of the chronic illnesses like obesity diabetes and cancer to name a few so cutting to the chase what does fiber do and as i said the good bacteria feed on the fiber but what happens then? Let me explain. First, some basics of digestion. The food you eat is made up of carbs, protein, and fat. We won't mention the colorings and flavorings and emulsifiers and pesticides and herbicide sprays that you consume. That's for other videos. So the carbs, protein, and fat get digested and absorbed. If you live mainly on refined carbs with little in the way of vegetables, legumes, etc., most of the refined carbs are converted to simple sugars and absorbed, raising your blood sugar, causing obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, and other chronic illnesses. <clears throat> if you're eating plenty of complex carbs in the form of vegetables and legumes, etc., the complex carbs are digested down to simple carbs and absorbed, and the fiber part of the complex carbs is undigestible to you and passes into the large bowel where the bacteria in there ferment and digest them and produce lots of nice things for you that improve your health. The bacteria produce vitamins like B vitamins, amino acids, and a group of special substances called short-chain fatty acids. These short-chain fatty acids have a profound effect on your health. I cannot emphasize this point enough. These short-chain fatty acids prolong your life in a healthy way and keep you healthy by, be, by having a number of actions. Let me list them, these wonderful benefits of short-chain fatty acids. Your gut lining uses short-chain fatty acids as fuel. They live on it. Short-chain fatty acids protect your gut lining from damage. That is, they have a protective function to prevent leaky gut. They reduce inflammation, they play a protective role in preventing cancer, they improve your immunity, 
They can trigger hormones that give you a sense of satiety, a feeling of fullness. Um, they protect you from developing food allergies. They protect the brain. They improve brain function by improving learning, memory, um, processing speed, and mental flexibility. They play a role in reducing cortisol, which is elevated when you are stressed. How many of you are stressed today? Here's one way of reducing the effects of stress in a simple way. Before I tell you about the foods that can help the bacteria produce these short-chain fatty acids, I'd like to emphasize some key points. Here we are talking about your waste fiber that you cannot digest or use being used to provide all these wonderful benefits. I'd like to put that another way. Can you Im imagine the garbage truck taking a weekly rubbish pr away for processing, processing it for a week and then sending it later sending you a bottle of pills? These pills will improve your memory and learning, improve your immunity, get rid of allergies, um, reduce your response to stress, and prevent you from getting cancer. And as a bonus, can also reduce your hunger feelings and so prevent your obesity. How much will you pay for a bottle of pills that will do all that? All these effects that I mentioned are proven by research, no sales talk. This is what can happen for free, providing, of course, you can eat correctly. So firstly, if you're not eating correctly, by that I mean a diet high in refined carbs and fats and high in protein with a little vegetables or fruit, you will not get the benefit of the short-chain fatty acids mentioned. This type of diet is very common in Western world and hence the increasing incidence of all those chronic diseases I talked about, and as a result, a reduced lifespan. Having said that, we will now talk about the beneficial groups of foods that produce all those healthful substances. The simple answer to diet is to eat a, a wide variety of vegetables and fruit. Eat from all the colors of the rainbow in, in vegetables and fruit. Include legumes and cereals. There are people who have food intolerances or allergies to grain or nuts or certain vegetables, example fructose or, or they are gluten intolerant. You must work with a suitably qualified health practitioner to work with this. I'm only giving you health information, not medical advice. So try and eat 30 different vegetables per week. These can include asparagus, garlic, onions, lentils, snow peas, beetroot, cashews, chickpeas, soybeans, oats, mushrooms, green bananas, cashews, uh, chickpeas, um, slightly green bananas, uh, apples, apricots, kiwis, berries. This is not an exhaustive list, but it gives you an idea um, in a range of foods that have the effects mentioned. To get healthy and remain healthy, you must feed your good bacteria. So they produce these short-chain fatty acids to perform all those wonderful actions that I mentioned. I've only been talking about the carbs, um, to ref refine carbs including sugars. What about refined or processed fats and oils and processed proteins and additives like colorings, flavorings, artificial colors? What about non-organic foods, the sprays, the pesticides and herbicides? I will be covering all of these individually in future videos. To not miss any of these videos, please make sure to subscribe to my channel below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.